Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. This is Jan uh, Diamondstone, who uh, presents with uh, a complaint of uh, bilateral swelling involving uh, the area of the parotid gland. Jan, will you uh, brief me on uh, the history of this situation? On uh, about May of 1968, okay. I went into the infirmary at the university I was attending, <coughs> complaining of feeling pretty bad, um, kind of like I had the flu and, and swelling of the parotid glands. Uh, it was diagnosed as the mumps, and I was told to either check in the infirmary or bury myself for a week, which I did, uh, and recuperated in about five days. Uh, about two weeks after that, I had more swelling and again ran a fever and felt weak and again similar, similar to the flu. Um, and went to see the doctor again and it promptly clamped me in the infirmary and started to run tests. Uh, nothing conclusive was ever discovered, however, I was given um, <clears throat> some antibiotic, of which I'm not sure exactly what it was, uh, which seemed to reduce the swelling and the fever. Louder. Seemed to reduce the swelling and the fever, and I was released after about 10 days to two weeks. Uh, since then, I've had recurrent swelling almost all of the time. They seem, they seem to be up um, a good 75% of the time. Now, you indicated that this problem was usually worse in the morning. Seems to be, yes. And then uh, gradually goes down, but uh, you have some swelling all day. Some swelling all day. Swelling, usually, if, if, if they're swollen, it'll last for several days, um, and it'll go down for several days, but they're usually worse. But you have not been able to uh, associate this with any particular activity or no, any particular I've, thing? I've tried uh, correlating it with spicy foods, sour foods, certain kinds of foods to which I might be allergic, and nothing seemed to, uh, to correlate. Right. You haven't had any alteration as far as salivary flow is concerned? None that I could You haven't had any alteration as far as taste is concerned? No. No one has ever done any examination on you for, um, to evaluate uh, the flow of salivary gland? <coughs> They've never injected anything into your gland and mm -hmm. taken x-rays to... No, no Okay, elements. all right. So uh, we see a, a problem that presents itself here with uh, the two areas of swelling. Uh, they're bilateral. And uh, <coughs> we see that uh, there's a swelling that is uh, of this uh, magnitude. And uh, we can see uh, on this side uh, that there's another swelling here. Um, <coughs> turn your head. And this swelling is localized in this area. Swelling is uh, rather firm, uh, slightly movable. And uh, the thing that is most striking about it is the fact that when she puts her teeth together and clenches her teeth, this swelling enlarges. Now, if you'll close, Jan, and clench. And if you have your fingers on here and palpate this area, at the time that she clenches, and this bulges out, you can see that and feel that this is a mass of muscle. And it really doesn't have anything to do with her parotid gland. Uh, <clears throat> in investigating her salivary flow, it's clear and normal. Uh, she uh, <clears throat> does have uh, considerable problems uh, as far as occlusion is concerned. She has a uh, very marked uh, prematurity in centric. We'll see if we can demonstrate it to you. Now, just let your jaws loose and let me bring your teeth together. And this is her degree of opening in centric. Now squeeze tight. And you see uh, <clears throat> it's about a five or six millimeter opening. Uh, <clears throat> she has rather extensive wear facets. 
and uh, this is complicated some by erosion. So we'll look at the lingual of her upper anterior teeth and uh, <clears throat> now if we can look at all of these uh, six anterior teeth, uh, we see that uh, there is very extensive uh, wear facets uh, with the enamel completely gone and well down into the dentine. And uh, I don't know whether uh, the camera will pick it up for us. Turn your head this way just a little. But uh, on this uh, maxillary right lateral incisor, there's a little pink dot on the lingual surface, which is where the pulp chamber shows through. And she's almost to the point of exposure of pulp uh, on that tooth. Um, <clears throat> when you uh, evaluate her functional activity, now close, slide your jaw over here to the right side towards me, and back just a little ways. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we can demonstrate it uh, because we'd have to look up underneath her teeth, but when she moves out, those facets that are on the lower incisors jibe with the facets that she has on the lingual of those upper anteriors. She also uh, demonstrates uh, an area of erosion, and uh, <clears throat> we'll see if we can demonstrate this to you. And <clears throat> this is in the posterior area in this uh, molar. And uh, <clears throat> you uh, notice on the second molar uh, that the surface is very smooth and uh, that you can see uh, the dentine is exposed. And uh, the uh, <clears throat> area of the restoration stands up above the surface of the tooth, uh, which is uh, indicative that it's not wear, but uh, is uh, a process of erosion. These are the chief findings that are present here in the thing that we uh, wanted to record for demonstration. Thank you, Jen. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.